basically that um, I, I feel it's a, a, certainly a strong probability that uh, some event might be um, laid on us to uh, to, to just distract from everything unfolding you know maybe maybe they'll start world war three maybe a false flag event or something this is purely speculation i have no knowledge of that obviously but ba- based on the ramifications of the imploding environment and, and and again to put this in a little more perspective uh russ the species extinction rate today is somewhere between 100,000 percent of normal background extinction and a million percent of normal background extinction. That's between 1,000 and 10,000 times normal background. We're losing as much as 200 species a day. Uh, We are in the sixth great mass extinction on planet Earth right now, today, and you can't hide that for long. You have uh, fish stocks imploding. 93% of global pelagic fish stocks are uh, now depleted, 93%. The, now, now the bottom of the food chain, mackerel, herring, uh, those are just starting to implode now completely. Um, the, the previous methane mass expulsion, okay, we have a paleo data to go on here. From 55 million years ago, the PETM event, Paleocene, Eocene, Thermal Maximum, was a methane mass expulsion event. And it's felt that there was about, you know, it depends on what model, what study you look at, but uh, as, as much as 70% terrestrial extinction and perhaps over 90% ocean extinction. So, you know, this is no joke, and, and uh, it's going to change. But, but again, if we stopped, if they stopped geoengineering, that is our best chance. That, you know, we, they can only hurt the Earth's climate systems that are trying to compensate for what's happening. But when they see the atmosphere, they stop cyclonic rotation, they stop ozone regeneration, they thwart the hydrological cycle, they poison what rain that does fall. It's doing nothing but harm. Geoengineering needs to stop. Uh, you said a word about the docks. Pelagic, is that what you said? Uh, pelagic fish populations. Those are, those are the, the greatest food stock fish, you know, the tuna, the mackerel, uh, uh, those are pelagic fish. Okay, so that's we're we're losing that on a massive scale right uh, now. They're they're 93 percent depleted globally already. 93 percent. I mean, they're the only reason they catch anything is because their fishing methods are so incredibly sophisticated. But you have the ocean acidifying at the same time, um, in addition to Fukushima radiation and you know a thousand other things. But um, ocean acidification is is. Um, happening per- perhaps uh, a thousand times faster than the Petum event I just mentioned 55 million years ago. So we are on a, a jet engine ride to a, a whole new reality. And, and again, I, I, I know my message is very dire, my conclusions are very dire, but um, first it has to matter to us to, to uh, try to raise awareness on this. For every single individual we reach, that has to matter in and of itself. It, it makes the effort matter. And two, um, it, no one can say how this will unfold. No one. And and again, our best best bet by far is for the planet to be allowed to respond, for people to understand what's happening, and not for these uh, completely clinically insane people to fly untold thousands of jets around day in, day out, and completely thwarting all of Earth's life support systems. And that's exactly what they're doing. Yeah, I have to say that I agree with your – I know there was just speculation about probably they may have a distraction uh, or false flag or something that will distract everybody. That's that's putting all the pieces together. I have to agree with that speculation that that's probably what they're going to do. Now, so by doing chemtrails, by by doing this so-called geoengineering, it sounds like they're they're obviously making the problem worse. Can't help but to believe they know exactly what they're doing. What do you think? They know they're making it worse, but maybe there's some reason behind it, well, or, or any no, th- any I, I thoughts on it, that? I, I think there could be a couple angles. I mean, I think that uh, in one on one hand, they know it's going to collapse, period, and so they don't care. Um, and, and I always have to bring up the issue of 1,800 plus nuclear detonations on planet Earth. I mean, what what sane uh, group of people would do that. I mean, exposing themselves absolutely positively to strontium-90 in all of our bones. You know, everything was contaminated from those 1,800 detonations blowing up beautiful South Sea islands. Why would anybody do that? I mean, you know, there's no sanity in this equation, certainly. But I, I believe in having 
spoken to Ken Caldera and, and uh, having uh, spoken to David Keith uh, at the Geoengineering Conference in, in San Diego that um, from my perspective, um, I, I don't think there's a lot of uh, rational thinking in this equation. Not at all. They live in bubbles where they, they you know, the, the, the consequences of their actions don't appear um, to be relevant to them. And so we're, we're dealing with, um, in my opinion, uh, a complete lack of deductive reasoning here with no comprehension as to the consequences of their actions. So it's hard to say, Russ, but I, but I believe also that the vast majority of people involved in these programs, the vast, vast majority, have no idea what they're doing. They, they are being told they're doing something that's going to save the planet, something benevolent, something necessary, and those are the people we need to reach. Those are the people who need to understand that they are sucking the noose around their own neck along with the rest of us. And, and I would hope that once they realize that, they would refuse to participate in this insanity. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Um, you had mentioned, um, uh, we can go to Q&A in just a second, but a couple questions I've heard from a lot of people. Um, we keep seeing this pattern of um, there's, everything is dying. I had uh, four different vegetables die off during two weeks of intense spraying um, uh, this summer. I have a garden. I've learned gardening the last three weeks, which I love. And uh, all, four, all of a sudden, four different vegetable types, just they all died. And uh, it, was, it, sink, it came right with two weeks of uh, spraying. You just mentioned you came in with a, you guess you're working with a dozer. You're seeing the decimation of forest. What are you seeing with uh, the plant life there, and how is that going to play into this? Again, you know, there, the, the geoengineering is, is the elephant in the room. It's, it's the, the main cause of decimation in, in many, if not most, uh, forested areas right now. Back to the species extinction, as much as 200 species a day going extinct, this is, and this is the important factor of this, it is thought that 70 to 80% of those extinctions, plant and animal, are fungally related. So when you poison the soils, when you saturate them with bioavailable, toxic, deadly, heavy metals, you kill the soil microbes. You kill the life of the soil. And what moves in when there's a clean slate? Fungus. And fungus is decimating everything from the oak trees to the, to the uh, some of the conifers and, uh, you know, and every other thing from top to bottom, including people, fungal sinusitis, epidemic now. Fungus is a very slow, insidious um, problem, and it's, it's, it's absolutely connected. The decimation of the forest, certainly we're seeing die-off, we're seeing trees that are weak. When trees uh, and many other organisms sense, when their roots sense bioavailable aluminum, there's studies on this in particular, so I'll use aluminum as an example, but they shut down to protect their DNA from damage. So they, they don't uptake nutrients, so they die a very slow, protracted death. And in the case of the forest in the Pacific Northwest, everybody says, oh, it's just the beetles. The beetles are only a symptom of a weak tree, a tree that has been poisoned. So, you know, all roads lead back to geoengineering. Again, uh, I mean, uh, if, if they had not been doing this for 60 years, I believe we would be in exponentially better shape. Now, it doesn't mean that we haven't damaged the planet. Again, that, any notion that, uh, that that has not occurred is, is just not looking at reality. But, but geoengineering, I believe, the biggest single causal factor, and if they had never started this, I, I believe we would be in, in a much better position. But as it sits right now, um, we are in free fall to an unknown reality. Okay, and you mentioned the, bio, uh, the biologically available aluminum. Now, soils naturally have a lot of bauxite, which, I, which they get aluminum from through manufacturing process, but that's completely different because that doesn't affect the plants the same way newly introduced, free, biologically available aluminum does. Is that correct? That's completely correct because it, this comes up so many times from these, these geoengineering disinformation sites and people and and um, that aluminum is 8% of the Earth's crust, and it is. But aluminum does not exist in the environment in free form, period. Always bonded to other elements, not bioavailable. It certainly doesn't blow around in the wind, as they have tried to claim. You know, when I, when I first dove into my research here, I, I talked to a, a hydrogeologist, one of the first people I talked to, and he was 
aghast at the, the aluminum reading I had in my rain and said, you know, you shouldn't have anything, you know, even one part per billion in your rain unless you live next to an Alcoa factory. Those are his words exactly. My first test in the rain was seven parts per billion of aluminum, already very high considering where I live. Subsequent tests over the next six years rose as much as almost 50,000% from that already high reading to 3,450 parts per billion in a single rain event. I mean, this is highly toxic rain. Snow, where this aluminum accumulated off the side of Mount Shasta, has been measured as high as 61,000 parts per billion. Uh, and nobody's talking, and people know, Russ. I mean, I, I've talked to NOAA scientists six months ago off the record. They they absolutely know. I I just had another meeting with the environmental waste in Northern California. They have you know tests from the Sacramento River that are spiking in aluminum, but they're afraid to say anything. And it's like, you know, everybody's worried about their eight to five job while we're all sinking at breakneck speed uh, into total extinction, literally. So I hope if we can reach critical mass, and academia knows, I mean, I don't think there's a meteorologist out there that doesn't know this is going on or, or a biologist that's involved with any type of forestry issue. And if we could just break the dam, I think it would break from 100 different directions. Okay, can you hear me now? Yep, gotcha. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Who do we contact? It seems almost impossible you know you can't get the legislators or senators to do anything you can't you know what should be our next step once we're aware and you know wanting to fight it extremely important question and uh, I would say this legislatively we will never get anywhere the systems bought sold paid for they've been setting it up for this for many decades um, I think they truly believe they could carry this on in, indefinitely. Um, it could not be further from the truth. So the, the entire system is rigged not to show these particulates. So we need to reach the people and not waste our time with agencies. And everybody can do that from their own home computer. Find groups that would care if they only had a clue. Farm groups, um, environmental groups, ADD, Alzheimer's, autism, um, some of the big fishing organizations are wondering why their streams are, are, are all dying. You know, the, 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 the list is almost endless of people that would care if they had a clue. Get credible data. Uh, send them a credible email with a couple good articles. I call these flaming arrows. We all need to be shooting these flaming arrows from our, from our home computer. Journalists that focus on environmental issues to, you know, uh, but something very thought out, credible article, site for more data, uh, geoengineeringwatch.org, our site is, is one site. Uh, even get an address and put an article or two in there. Uh, that doesn't cost much to do. And we all, the, the, since there's so few of us, the best thing we can do is to try to start these spot fires with people who are absolutely personally being horrifically affected and would care if they really got it, if they really uh, accepted this was going on. And, and to add to that, I would say they will no longer have the option of denying this because... I don't think this lump will fit under the rug much longer. So even if it doesn't start an immediate fire, it'll smolder there. And when they start to see everything imploding around them, I believe uh, those seeds will find fertile ground. So we can all, from, if there's an organized campaign to locate groups, organizations, and individuals that would care, journalists, if they knew, and, and send out data. Just keep sending it out, you know, and, uh, and mail films. Uh, make copies of Murphy film, but what, 25 cents a copy for a DVD or 50. Uh, just continue to shoot out those flaming arrows. With the few of us there are, that's the most effective thing we can do.